Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Erendus. Hey everybody. And Cinders. Hello. Hello. And let's head into our news for this week where we had a little bit of a patch. And the patch includes some changes on the stat axe where the trait rewards for the following deeds have been corrected. The deed Enmity of the Cultist 2 should now properly bestow when you complete Enmity of the Cultist Tier 1. Enmity of the Cultist 2 now awards a nimble handed trait, and Enmity of the Cultist now awards the needful ingenuity trait. And since I have yet to so much as unlock Enmity of the Cultist, I have not yet been affected by this, but I'm not even too sure what the cultists are. I'm assuming that the cultists are Agram, because I'm trying to think, who else would be cultists? Well, that... Would they yeah. be the Angram, or would they be the, um, oh, the cultists of the eye people who are all around that um, particular location in Mordor? The trouble with the order, well, I can understand the order of the eye, them hating, you won't be able to unlock that until you get to Mordor, because that's the only place where they're at, right? Well, that's possible, but with the Arya option, it's possible that people were jumping up. Yes, but and running usually enmity, usually enmities are at level fifty and lower. Okay, maybe I've I've not known a, an enmity before that was not possible to complete before you hit level fifty. So that's why I think anything that's out that's down in the Mordor is highly, highly unlikely. There, I don't know. I haven't played my stat out long enough to find out either. Yeah, so I'm going to guess that they're Angrim, but I'm not going to find out. Well, let's see. Until you get to even if it's the earliest place where I could think you'd run into Angrim, unless I'm missing something. Um, are the people in the northern part of the Lone Lands Angrim? In that northeastern part of the Lone Lands. The northeastern part of the Lone Lands. Are there any because? Actually, I think those are Hillmen, though. Okay. Yeah, that would be my guess. I mean, there is one Angmarim in that you fight when you, in the epic storyline, when you kill Amdir, but I have a feeling that it's the empty of the Angram is probably not unlocked until you probably hit level 29 because there are different levels where you start to unlock these things. And I suspect that they're not going to unlock a deed to kill Angram until you hit level 29. That makes sense. I say, what I'm hearing is that I need to play my stout axe and we need to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm hearing. And that's what we're going to have to do. I'm just getting started on my style X. I'll talk about that later. The no weapon aura icon now looks like a blank gray instead of like a ring. I was wondering why it was looking like a ring. So yeah. they changed that. And in PVMP, they fixed an issue with the get now button on the monster play character selection screen. And they fixed the ring animation on the monster play character selection screen. So a, f a number of minor changes that were done in there. And now let's head into our Lotro Beacon. And concerning the Lotro Beacon, the Lotro Beacon is for now on going to be published on Fridays, not Thursdays, and that's because all of you has decided to take on a position elsewhere. Therefore, Cordovan has the beacon once again. And with all his other duties that he has, he does not feel he has time in order to get it out on Thursday. 
So therefore, they'll be publishing it on Friday. They will be publishing the sales announcement in a separate messages on Thursdays as a result of that. So let's see what is in the beacon for this week. And on the front cover, where is that? You don't have any idea? A lake with boats? Yeah, that is... It looks like Markwood. Kind of, sort of, a little bit. Well, that would make sense, because that is certainly a forest... In which case, there'll be a river instead of a lake, if that's the case. A very still bend in the river. Uh, a very uh, still uh, bend in the Um, I could see that. It looks like that might be an elf looking far into the distance. Yes. You know, as you can in a forest. Yes. <laughs> as you can in a forest. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, our community spotlights. Millard's Got Talent is moving to October 16th. And you can check for the latest information about the musical competition on Landerville. And that will be next week. Yeah, I didn't know that this was a thing. So I'm. it sounds really cool. Right, and then we have a memorial concert for taking place this Sunday. That will be after the live show, but obviously it will be before the before the podcast post on on the forums. And that is take place this Sunday on Lanchville in honor of a fallen band leader. And there will be details if you click on the link. And the latest Oaks takes place this Saturday on a Laurelin. Actually, I guess that's already passed then, since anything on Laurelin will be long past complete at this time of night. And another thing, so the next thing is Saturday. And Frights of Fancy is set for later this month on Gladden. And there are plenty of details relating to that on the link. And they have a little teaser here. As the temperature of Middle Earth turns a bit crisper and the leaves turn into burnished jewels, a hobbit's thought often turns to, well, mostly the pie. But also, my stars and gardens, Lobelia, where did you get that hat? Oh, it's really quite something, isn't it? You wonder if the spider on the brim is an infestation from Scary or a daring fashion statement. Then Lobelia's simper turns into a shriek of fright. She tears the hat off her head and stamps on it with both hairy hobbit feet and bursts into tears. Now, what will I wear to the festival dance? Fortunately for you, this, you have an answer. Hmm. It sounds like to me that Sans Wind and Lobelia would have the same reaction. Probably. <laughs> and if you're looking for inspired or want to show off your finery of the free peoples, come join the Rangers of the West on Glen Server for Frights of Fancy on Sunday, October 27th at 2 p.m. server time. Categories will include scariest costume and autumn themed costumes. And prizes for first, second, and third place registration will be on the day of the event. Come see the best dressed free peoples on Gladden. Maybe even discover you're one of them. Well, unlikely I would be, but. <laughs> and that will be remember that the Gladden server on Frights of Fancy on Sunday, October 27th at 2 p.m. server time. Oh, that could be quite an interesting event, though I have a feeling I'm already booked at 2 p.m. server time. But remember to bring your pie. Whee! 
That's a good thing. No matter where you go, always remember your pie. <laughs> <To> say yummy <laughs> pies. <laughs> yes. And the third kite walk takes place on Guajir on October 27th. For our kin haul for this week, the Blade Renewed is a new raiding kin on Arkansas looking for players interested in in-game raids and instances. With the teamwork and mentoring, the kinship acquires better gear, improves their skills, and advances tier to tier. All level T- one, all level 120 players available for weekly runs can click on here for more information. So this is an exclusive club if they said you need to be at level 120. And I said the player has to be at level 120. I mean, I have characters at level 120, but I have a feeling my player is only about level 80. <laughs> yeah. Now for our weekly comment. We often remember the most heroic battle cries, but they can't all be good, right? What's the almost good enough battle cry that you've heard? I feel like this is an oddly specific question. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what I want to know is, are they talking about the one, like, in-game that you've heard? Or are they talking about, like, the one you've heard from the person next to you on the couch? Um, or in Discord or whatever <laughs> communication method you use. Well, I would say either one would be appropriate. Let's say, because the one I usually hear is "ha ha." Ha Well. That's usually what you say after you kill them, I would have thought, rather than <laughs> at well, the battle cry. Now, when you're running around one-shotting things on a guardian because you're way over level and you can, that is the one that you hear. Because they're like, ah. yes, DPS! <laughs> <laughs> Finally, once <laughs> in a blue moon. Um, no. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I would imagine. How about I can imagine Emerlina going for the pies? That one, I think that one. Would. If I could make her say that, yeah, that one would work. Um, <laughs> I saw one in the forums where it was talking about how, um, you know, raid leaders or kin leaders or just even group leaders when they're like, "Okay, we're gonna go in just a minute," and everyone does the whole charge in, and the leader is the last one standing in the back because everyone just rushed them. Or even and worse, so whatever they the, say. the door that shuts down when people go inside to the boss fight. Yep. And the leader shuts down into the, the face of the leader. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's always interesting. Uh, I think probably the ones like in game that I've seen most recently are Saradans when he's going up to see Gwai here or Gwillian or whatever her name is. Not quite here, Gwillian, the old lady of the mountain. And he's yeah. like having this monologue on how awesome he is as he's like smacking his way up to it. And he takes the long way around, and you're just kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the path, like two steps back and to the right, would get you to the same place much faster and safer. Um,. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> Mary Rose Rangers. in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go on. <laughs> I was going to say Mary Rose in the chat says they do love their Hobbit mini scream. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Yelling Hobbits are always the most awesome thing ever, though. When the Hobbits are running around yelling, it's amazing. Especially when they're yelling at things that are like three times their size. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. I'm telling you, hobbits have powerful screams. There you go. For our fan site news, Tay Martini is one of a growing number of players streaming Lotro on Mixler. 
Yiki is conducting some charity streams for Breast Cancer Awareness Month by playing Lotro. And Sigmund Yu recently held an annual fundraiser with a massive marathon. Oh boy, that was a massive marathon all week. And that was where Professor Olson, his goal was to go, he he started out just arriving at Minas Tirith or somewhere around there, and his goal was to get just to the point of getting ready to start the Ride of the Rohirrim and the and start the Battle of Pelennor Fields. And it was the first time in history where Corey Olson beat his schedule. Wow. It, yeah, because it was, I think, about maybe one or two hours before midnight when he actually started the Battle of Pelennor Fields. He says, all right, let's go and continue. <laughs> and he actually decided, all right, uh, he was going to go and see how far he can get into the Battle of Pelennor Fields. And considering that the thing, I saw the time for it, something like, I think he must have finished something like 2 a.m. or something like this, which means he must have gotten all the way through the battle. Because that was quite a thing. And of course, he did all the instances associated with the battle as he was doing it. So when he came to the Black Serpent, he actually ran the Black Serpent quest and ran through that instance. Though I think there were a couple of players in there who might have been a little bit over-leveled, so they didn't they didn't have as much trouble as one usually does when attempting that particular instance. But I have not yet seen the entire thing. I've only seen parts of these. I had to leave, I think, when they were just getting ready to do Silent Street, because as far it was getting really, really late at that point. But yes, they ran their entire thing, and hopefully they'll be able to get that onto YouTube. They'll probably have to. They're probably going to be taking forever trying to get the thing edited down into YouTube size length because yeah, a fourteen-hour sh- stream is not going to go up too well. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I have never actually gotten to watch the professor, but I have been told he is very thorough. And the couple of times where girls have done stuff around what the professor has been doing, it's been interesting to see. So I just haven't had the time to sit and really watch or listen. Yes, we're talking about the same professor who started, was it a little who started at least two years ago, I think it was, a thorough reading of The Lord of the Rings. And I think they're still in Rivendell. Yeah, I don't know. Again, (laughs) I have had a few other things going on in my life. Yeah. uh, That prevent me from listening. Yes, he takes his time. (laughs) So... But there and are of course, people who love those yes. kinds of things. So they definitely, if you're into like listening to podcasts and watching stuff, highly recommend. Yes. And of course, last week we walked out of Morador. And Father Roderick plays Lotro on YouTube and Zogog streams on Legendary. And you can check out the YouTube channel there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Guarenda says, the phrase evil upholstery should be trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that is quite true. Evil upholstery. <laughs> he likes to check out all the evil upholstery. And please note that next week brings two events to Middle Earth. The Harvest Math Festival is scheduled to start next week on October 15th and will run through November 4th. Yeah. 
I was just doing a whoop whoop. Oh, okay. I'm excited. Whoop, whoop, yeah. <laughs> Great yeah. place to get those starlet crystals so that you have them ready to go with the next level bump. Well, there is that. And Girin's Day begins on October 16th and runs through October 21st. Which is also and, really cool. Yes, and a player named Fibro Jedi continues to maintain a great festival guide, so I'm sure that as soon as the Harvest Math Festival opens up, as quickly as possible, he will update the guide to include the latest items from the festival. And find the secret door in Erebor to take part, of course, in Deeran's Day event. And you can guess where that secret door is going to be. And Fernbjorn gets an awesome view while questing in the Vales in this week's Screenshot of the Week. And it looks like his. Ooh. I guess that's towards the mountain, so that means that'll be near getting near sunset then. Pretty close then. Or maybe it's sunrise. Well, that's what I was thinking. If he's looking towards the mount, that's what I was wondering. If he's looking towards the mountains, because he's looking know. towards the mountains, it'll be sunset, because sunrise would be towards Mirkwood. But if he's standing on, or well, yeah, it's hard it's to tell the, when he's standing in the middle of a river, though. Those could yeah. just be tall hills on either side. Yeah, you do have a point there. There, yeah, it is a cool shot, regardless, though. Yes, yes whichever, whether it's a sunrise or a sunset. And I should also note that they are planning to have the first of the Bulwer. Builds for the uh, for the Minas Morgul expansion out next week. So someone did ask the rather interesting question: How are we going to copy our characters over if character transfers are currently turned off? And Corvin said that they are working on something in order to allow that. So whether they'll get that in or not, we'll have to find that out. But just remember, we still have character transfers are still not working for whatever reason. Terry would say it's because we can't have nice things. Actually, <laughs> that is most likely the case. In fact, that's what I was thinking about because another thing that was mentioned this week was that we – was that when they have the release for Minas Morgul, the cap of the Embers 10,000 cap is going to be strictly enforced, meaning some people apparently had transferred had transferred their Embers on one server to another server, and as a result have more than 10,000 Embers there, they gave a warning. If you've got more than 10,000 embers at the release of Minas Morgul, it's being knocked down to 10,000. So spend those points now or it's lose them. So use anything over 10,000 or lose them at the time that Minas Morgul, at Minas Morgul is, re is released. Which is currently scheduled a little bit more than two weeks from now. And that is it for our beacon for this week. So let's head into our store sales. And who would like to talk about the store sales? I will. So we have the Lotro bonus days with a VIP event through Monday the 14th. Um, and in the store sales, we have 20% off of Stat Tomes, Regeneration Food, Run Speed Boost, Attack Damage Boost until October 17th, and the weekly coupon that gets you a free 5% attack damage for 90 minutes boost with the coupon code 5, like the number 5, ATTACK, now through October 17th. Actually, a funny incident I noticed that while I was playing earlier today was someone was trying to sell his 5% attack damage. Apparently, 
he didn't understand the concept of bound to account. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, that's problematic. Yeah. My recommendation, if you have them on characters you don't use them on, send them to your guardians. If you have them. <laughs> that is my piece of advice. That's where all of mine go. So all of my DPS characters that do their own just fine attack damage, all of their 5% attack damage things that they get, or any kind of attack damage that I get out of Hobbit presence and stuff. So if it, unless it's bound to the character, it goes to my guardian. <laughs> it makes a difference, and so do shield spikes. That's what I have learned. For this week's Where in Middle Earth is Emerolina going to the our Lotro section for this our site news for this week. Where in Middle Earth is Emerolina number twenty four, where first of all we talk about where it was last week and Cinders, where were you last week? So last week, um or in the previous post because it was really about two weeks old. Yeah. Um Emerlina was in the Bjorning house, courtesy of San Swinda, um, pocket hunter. Yay! Um, in the Vales of Anduin. And um, she ran around looking for a place where you could kind of see the hedge, but not really see the hedge, because that's kind of the dead giveaway for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then she, like, fainted from all the washing she'd been doing. It was too much for her. <laughs> I admit that I had not considered the possibility that it could be the Orning Hoose. <laughs> so, um, being only level 113, I sometimes rely on Sanswinda to transport me to different places um, that I cannot ah. get to myself. So, just because I'm not at the correct level for somewhere does not mean that that place could be completely ruled out. And sometimes okay. I take her along to protect me if I'm in an area that I can't defend myself, but it would be really awesome to be there. So she'll, like, come and stand out of the shot and kill stuff. <laughs> she could stand, stand out of the shot, kill stuff, maybe drop a few traps to keep things from getting through. <laughs> yep, pretty much. So, yeah, because Emerlina really can't do it on her own. Because she has no <laughs> DPS. <laughs> and right now her morale isn't too hot either. She really needs some better gear and some work on her virtues. But she's still It would be favorite. funny. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, one of these days you should try to do a, like, a behind the scenes of where in Middle Earth is Emerlina. And just take a shot of wherever Sands is and, like, all the traps or anything set up. <laughs> say, we should actually just set up a few of those just for fun. Even if it's the, there you yeah. go. Because otherwise everyone would be like, oh, it has to be over this level. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, she yeah. can't even do the dailies in Minas Tirith by herself. Because it takes hours. <laughs> It's really pathetic. <laughs> yes. Now, for this week, it looks like we have some snow here. There is snow. And there's also a fox. There is a fox. Uh, is the fox hovering in the bush, or...? The fox is on the ground behind the bush. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. It's okay. It is? I don't have the best... something, I don't know. It is. Okay, yeah, it looks as if the, yeah, to me it looks like the fox is in the bush. <laughs> like, yeah, like he jumped up <laughs> and landed on top of the bush, and now he's just kind of like, what did I just do? Yeah, there were originally <laughs> like three of them there, but by the time I got the shot I wanted it, the other two had wandered off. <laughs> he photobombed, he photobombed your shot. Yeah, because he, he doesn't look like he's behind the bush because he's because he's too large to be behind the bush, I would think, and still be in view, I would have thought. Hmm. Well, I think it has to do with the angle of the camera and the distance on the ground from the bush itself. It ah, rise, okay. The slope of the yeah. land would make a difference in that, too. So. Yeah, I suppose that could make a difference. But I promise, in game, it, the fox was on the ground. Okay, the fox is on the ground. Yes. Okay, okay. So that's this week's, and and I presume next time we'll find out exactly where you are this time. Yes, because if I tell you now, then I'll give it away. <laughs> no, right. no fun in guessing. <laughs> <laughs> 
then let's head into a little bit of bad news, and that is that the new Mac OS cl- uh, operating system, the Catalina, will not support 32-bit applications, such as Wine. Yeah, this is this is not fun for Mac users. Yeah, this is not fun for Mac users. And in fact, what's really bad is I think it was just a couple of weeks ago where they released the Wine client for DDO. And I could just imagine the trouble they went through to get a wine client for DDO and have it all ready as then to learn a couple weeks later. Oh, by the way, this will not work now because Oh, man. It's a 32-bit application. <sighs> so that's going to be a little, a little bit of a problem. And I'm sure Stanley Stone Games is going to have to find out what they're going to do, but Stanley Stone Games can't do anything until what there's a 64-bit version of Wine available, and who knows if and when that's going to happen. It's too bad that there wasn't a way for Standing Stone Games to have it be separately supported, like without having to have a third party. Because it would be really cool if it could just run without having to have Wine. Or yeah. whatever. Well, they did originally have a native Mac one, but they're having a lot of trouble maintaining it. It's maintaining two very different clients was beyond the was beyond the capabilities of Standing Stone Games because they don't. I have a feeling they don't have the staff in order to do new development and maintain a Mac client at the same time hmm. Hmm. it's not yeah I, I wonder what would happen if you were to pull players and find out how they felt about that because i know for myself knowing how much fun the game is i would totally be willing to take a rest on updates and um like new content so that they could work on developing some of the other things um and so i wonder what would happen if they were to like take a poll of the clientele and just see what people actually think well, I have a feeling that the that if you ask players concerning what they want on the concerning a concerning a native Mac client or whatever, I suspect that the Mac users will more likely to be voting for what you're saying as opposed to the PC players. I think right, so. but if go ahead, but if like say the poll shows that, you know, half the players have Macs and half of them use PCs. If that's half of your, if that's half of your client base, I I know I'm just picking numbers and I I don't think it would be that number, but I think that the poll is a good idea if they could figure out how to implement it. Um, Especially if it means that Mac players can't play the game at all, if they choose to update. If they choose to update. Yeah. That's sort of the, the pro. Well, and I know at some point though, Max just kind of force it, force the updates eventually um, for security reasons. And so, I don't know. I know, like, for me as a player, like, I want people to have the opportunity to experience the game and enjoy it. And sometimes with all of the new expansions and stuff rolling out, like, it's just one thing after another. I mean, we've had, what, two already this year with the Veils of Anduin and now with Minas Morgul? Like, I'd be okay with taking... I'd be okay with taking a break, (laughs) you know, and getting to really enjoy and experience the new content rather than always feeling like you have to race through it on top of your daily life. And yeah, I I can see it for some people, especially if they're, they're busy or whatever, just saying, Hey, you know what? Let's take the time. Let us enjoy the new content and the content that we have run up some new players. Since we all have stat ax dwarves, we can run them through all that content again. Like, Play your characters on on our Ithel, you know, and 
work on leveling them up and instead of always just racing to the newest and the best and well i can pretty much say that that. right now there i know there's a a portion of the player base who complains that they're doing new content too slowly (laughs) oh i feel like those are probably the people (laughs) and i could be wrong so i'm just gonna go on i think to me, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, so what do you do with the rest of your life? Um, <laughs> because I, I have a full-time job, and I'm a parent, and I'm still like, I barely have time to come up with three things for Lotro Player Zoos, and I really enjoy playing. And you know, <laughs> like, But if you have like a thousand other things, you know, going on, it's like, okay. Like, I can understand wanting new content. New content is nice, but... There's also something to be said for really thoroughly knowing old content, too, and getting to go back and reread some of those stories that are really awesome and amazing that maybe you just raced through the first time because you were following your friends, and then the second time you're like, oh, I'm taking my time. Oh, this makes sense. So that has been my experience, at least, and what I think, especially people coming to the game, unless you're, it's the only thing you're doing, I I don't know how you maintain so many characters at that level trying to always do the newest and next best thing. Like, that would be so time-consuming. Well, not all of them have multiple numbers of players at that high level. Yeah, but, I mean, you could roll a new character. You could go do something different, you know, maybe. Well, I I just know that the... (laughs) Is that the rating community is not one that likes waiting too long. They com- they complain they're not getting enough as it is. Yeah, but is most of the community rating or is it just well no a smaller number? but it but you know I say that I will say if we're if it were only once a year for updates, I have a feeling that I suppose taking a real poll would have to be would have to be done or get this, but I have a feeling that the majority will say two updates a year is not too fast. Okay. But of course, that's just my guess. Yeah. I don't know. Just a thought. I think that regardless of, you know, whether, you know, new content is coming out too fast or too slow or we need to figure out this or figure that out. I think that Lotro needs to come up with some kind of solution because otherwise, I mean, there are going to be people out there who won't be able to play at all after a certain point. And if they're hardcore Mac people, they might not want to buy a PC just to play a game. So, you know, they're going to have to come up with something eventually. Well, and it's a lot of money to buy a new computer, even a PC. Like it's not as expensive as a Mac, but a good PC is it's a good chunk of change and well and especially the the people who do free to play i mean why would you pay you, i mean and this is just my opinion if you're playing a free game and the only reason why you're buying a machine is to play that free game you have to really love that free game you know yeah, yeah. i mean and if it's worth it to you then by all means go you know do it and there's one option for a solution for you i don't know if everyone would want to or could do that yeah, I, don't know, I think well, there's a lot of things to consider. Yeah. Fortunately, if you bought a PC just for that, you don't need a very high-end PC to play Lotro. Though you probably need a good, pretty good graphics card if you want to say, do good graphics. You yeah. need the graphics card is what you need more than anything else, and it needs to have the speed to run it. Um, yeah. Because I know even Sans Windows and my computers can get bugged down, especially if we're playing with people. Um, mm-hmm. And they're when we bought them, they were up at the top of the line, but even with those, I mean, updates are still coming out so fast that sometimes I'm like, don't tell me I need to buy another computer. (laughs) (laughs) I'm waiting for this one to fall apart. It's like a year old, you know? But. Yes. Now, some people are saying, well, Squirrel has an article relating to this, and one of the options he's wondering is having a dual is having a dual boot on your computer or something like this. I don't know how well that works on Macs or anything like that. So Yeah. 
but uh, especially since Squirrel doesn't play use Max either, so he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's <laughs> just a guess. On his <laughs> I say I use Mac for work, and I do PC <laughs> everywhere else because it's more. Um, oh, it's more cost effective for us to use PCs at home than it is to do Macs, but. I can see why if you've invested all the money in a nice Mac that you wouldn't yeah. want to drop money on a PC if you didn't have to. Yeah. Um, Guarenda says partitioning is a pain, which means it must be possible, but it sounds like it's not something that you want to do on a routine basis or anything like that. And it also has a seven year old iPhone I'll have to I would have to note that my iPhone is older than that, so I can't <laughs> <laughs> say mine is not that old yet, but it's getting there. I had to replace it because it wouldn't make phone calls. <laughs> well, I still have yeah, mine yeah. Either. Old. There is that little problem. I think mine will still make phone calls. My problem is that it is convinced that a it's convinced that there's a password to access my voicemail that I never put a password into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it something like zero zero zero. zero. <laughs> I should try that at some point just to see. If you didn't well, put it you might in, get locked it out probably... of your voicemail. <laughs> it sounds like he already is locked out of his voicemail. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of funny not gonna lie <laughs> so yeah so I the moral probably... of the story is if you've tried to call pine leaf and left a voicemail he's not ignoring <laughs> he's... you he promises he's just locked that's out of his <laughs> oh that's why when i ask that's why when i give a so when i want to call me a my phone number i give them my work number instead because there you go <laughs> It's more effective to get a hold of Pie Leaf at work than it is the other way. <laughs> now, Pie Leaf, do you text? That's the real question because you can totally bypass your voicemail with text messaging. And no, I don't text. Ah. Uh, for century man. You've reached the voicemail of Pine Leaf Needles. He'll get back to you eventually, mate. <laughs> We All digress. Right. Yes, we digress. We digress a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah. We've digressed off the digression. Yes, uh, th- we did almost Corey Olsen level of digression. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we're we've officially made it, guys. <laughs> then, and then is and now on other news anding is giving away three minus mortal expansion keys on his twitch channel one of them has already been given away so but there are two more that are still to be done what level are they because if it's the ultimate that would be awesome especially with that new information that came out about that oh yes i'll get to that in a moment then because yeah you completely cool. reminded me of that and it wasn't yes, the update the, notes but as for the meanest moral expansion, I'm assuming that they are the lowest tier because I can't think, I don't think that Andy could afford three ultimate meanest moral keys. They are expensive, but they're really cool. Yes. But he he has, what he says that that's happening on the 9th, 19th, and 30th, which sounds like a rather strange strange pattern in there but all right assuming that's the case then we still have the one on the 19th and the 30th to go and you don't have to be present on those dates but of course you have to... it does talk about how you enter the giveaway and all that stuff but I mean, those are being put out by and day then let's head into brax's memorial pick of the week and What's the pick of the week? It is Terry Adwin's Closet. Sneaky dwarves. Uh, sne- <clears throat> sneaky going into Terry Adwin's Closet, I said. <laughs> 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 so the better question is, did he get caught? Yeah, and oh, the better question is, oh well, I, yeah, Terry Edwin's closet, since 
guess who put the wrong link in there? <laughs> okay. In Terry Andrews' closet, we have Sneaky Dwarves, which is, a, of course, a stout axe burglar outfit. Yeah, we're going to have to update that link. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that after the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Yes. And, yeah, so this is, of course, an outfit in here. She made two versions of the outfit, one with a hood cloak and one with the hood lowered to show off the hat. The cosmetic slots are key fouled for easy cosmetic changes, too. So no flipping open the character panel, just to lower the hoods indoors. That sounds like the preparedness of Terry Adwin. <laughs> Yes, and she is very prepared for that. Yes. And things are here. Let's see what we have here. We have the lesser voice of the West Hat, which is our Harndirian barter. So that's a little bit of a high class one up there. We have the Time Worn Shoulders, High Elf Starter Gear, medium armor class. So that's so that means you have to have at least one high elf on your on your character. You have to have a character that got the Harndirian. A plain cloak or plain hooded cloak, of which you can get from the basic outfitter, so that's easy to get. Nightshade jacket of, from the Dunland Quest reward. A fine gray company, Gauntlets, dyed umber from the Epic Storyline Volume 3 Quest Reward. Nightshade boots, dyed walnut brown from Dunland Quest Reward. And Ankhil, Epic Story Volume 1 Quest Reward for the daggers. See, I gotta love the shadow effect, though, in there. Because in some of them, she appears to be like in Thorn's gate. And then in one of them, she's inside the Black Gate of Mordor, and it's got the purple cloud effect in, underneath him, and it's really cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, it does Did look you cool. see that? Yeah. Hmm. It looks like a cape. <laughs> that's what I thought at not. first. I was like, wait a yeah. second. No, that's she the found shadow a glowy effect. cape? What's happening? A glowy cape would be awesome. I would buy, well, a, I would spend real, real money on a glowy cape. Um, <laughs> I would buy that oh. from the Lotro store. At Standing Stone. Yeah. Now, the question is, though, if she took that at... You said she took that at Mordor? Yes, she could have just walked through a door, though. Because it appears yeah, to be... Yeah, that's why I, she I had to she have walked, walked through, through a door. A door How... I was assuming that this must be close to the location where the door dumps you, then. Uh, yes, it appears to I, be just outside that camp. Okay, good. Take a quick shot before something comes in and kills you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> then, with that done, let's have a little couple of things that were also announced. The first of these is the announcement of the crafting carry all, which is a nice, neat little bag for crafters. There are two versions of this. A small one, which will hold up to 10 different items, up to 2,000, I believe, of each one. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but yeah, it's, it's been... Yeah, 2,000, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's a significant yeah. chunk, is what I was going to say. It's a significant chunk, yeah. Yeah, and so 2,000 of up to 10 different items in there. And the big one holds up to 50 different items, up to 5,000 each. Whee! And that's going to be quite a lot that you can hold. And this is something that, A, I think people have been asking for something to do about inventory, especially for crafters. Yes. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and I think it's also inspired by what they do in DDO because DDO has all has a several different auxiliary type bags. They have a crafting bag. They have a, a they have collectibles bags. They have gems bags. They have 
several different types of special bags in which could hold various things. And they have them in a number of different sizes also. So this looks like something that can be useful for your crafter. I could just imagine an explorer going out of there with one of those big 50... <laughs> I might have plans for the crafting bags when they drop. Yes. <laughs> and Guarindus. And Guarindus, of course, wants one for musical instruments. So. Oh, man. <laughs> I say they yeah. If they keep doing this, they could eventually have the motto. We have a bag for that. Yeah, we have There's a, a bag, bag for that. We have a bag for that. We'd like. There's a bag, for, a bag that. for that. <laughs> yes. So that's what they're having a, and they are going to come out with the Meanness Morgul expansion. And if you pre-ordered either the second or third level tier, the deluxe tier or the ultimate tier, you will get one of the small ones. And if you pre if you ordered the top end, the ultimate tier, you will, in addition to that, also get a one of those large ones. Whee! Yeah. I'm hoping they also put it in the Lotro store, though, for the people who didn't know, since it wasn't really pushed with the expansion, so that the people who bought the lower levels could get the bigger ones, too. Yes. It always has to be in the Lotro store, because... That's probably one of the good sellers that they have in DDO. So they have an idea how much people want these things, but what happens in DDO? So I'm sure they've tracked how well they sell. I don't know exactly how well they sell or anything like this, but I could be sure that the fact that they've introduced additional bags and stuff like that, that is likely something that's commonly used out there. Now, in DDO... There are a couple of places where in the starter instances, they have these really, really tiny bags to give you an idea how they work. <laughs> and I'm sorry. That, so, so maybe having like five with up to a, a, a hundred or something like that each or something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just the way that you said that, I was sitting here going, you take stuff and put it in. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just, it's been a day. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I wonder, though, is whether or not these will have a an auto-gather feature, as you have in DDO, where in DDO, you have, for example, you have a gem bag, you can set it to auto-gather so that whenever you pick up a gem, it'll suck it into the bag. <gasps> That would oh my be God. amazing. Yeah. I have no idea if they have any plans for it. Actually, I think they showed a... Is it going to be available a... in Bulrar to try out? Well, that's the problem is that... Unless... I guess if... That's a good question, because Bulber doesn't usually check such things on which bundle you have, right? No, but if it was something that they're letting you, like, experiment with and try out, if you are on Bulber, it might be available regardless of the bundle that you got. Yeah, that's a possibility. That and would then be just, nice. And it would help drive that interest in it, too, so I would be surprised if it wasn't available to try, regardless of what bundle you purchased. You right? have... You have an excellent point there. So, let's have a look at this. Okay, the ultimate... Okay, they have a picture of it in the... Actually, what I should do is... Is there a... The collector's ultimate will get a crafting large. Okay, they're small and large is what they're calling them. All right. These will be delivered. Oh, that's right. These will be delivered once per account and will be delivered to the first character you log into after Minus Morgul launches. If you play on multiple servers, please make sure that the first log into server is where you want to use these carry all bags because that's where they're going to be delivered. I think their icon should be a vacuum cleaner where one is like the handheld like <laughs> duster one, you know, and then the the big bag is like the the vacuum. A whole like 
like a full size floor. Yeah, vacuum. like a full size floor model. I think that'd be <laughs> awesome. All right. Now, what they have here, I don't see an auto gather button on the prototype that they show here, but they do have they do have a button to say gather, so that if you press the button, it'll gather everything. I guess that's appropriate. That's it currently in your that's currently in your bags. And then my other question would be, if it drops once per account, can you buy it for, like, other characters and other servers? So that eventually each of your crafters, you could have a bag dedicated to their crafting materials. Yeah, that's the thing that we are all anxious to find out. Because if they're available in the store, I'm sure people will want to buy it. (laughs) I can guarantee people will want to buy it. In fact, <laughs> I know at least two people who will be standing in line. I mean, sitting in line, um, online, waiting to do it. Yeah, there. <laughs> I'm sure there will be plenty of people who will be. Then also, let's see if there's anything else that is, I think all the other stuff we've already announced so let's head into our new player question and what's the question this week the question this week uh you mentioned in the sale items uh regeneration what what is that it does that is that different from regular food or what is that it is sorry if this is a silly question but i don't know what this means it's crams oh Say it's the okay. the food that drops from the store and from Hobbit presents, um, and I think and finally correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't really played with it much, but <laughs> I think it is the stuff that um, it will continue to level with you. <laughs> so you know Got how it. like some of this stuff it's like level five and it only gives you like a specific number of morale regeneration or whatever. Um, I think these are the ones where it gives you more of a percent rather than a, I could be wrong. It's well, they change. I don't think they sell the original type anymore. The one that has only a fixed value. I think, I think the only one they sell these days is probably, I think cramps is the only one that sell now because yeah. yeah. But that's a percentage, right? Or is that a fixed value? Just a much larger it's, fixed value. Whenever you level, it increases. Okay, that's I don't what know I was if thinking. it's literally a percentage, but it's it's a it's based on your level and how much it yeah. gives you. Because like the stuff that you can make, that has a specific level that it's for, and the stuff that drops right. from as like quest rewards has a specific level. But the stuff right. that you buy from the store, it's the blue stuff with the shiny silver box around it. Um, the food that drops from that and the potions that drop that look like that, um, go up when your level does. Right? Right. I've never bought regeneration food from the store. I the haven't. Only one that I, the only regeneration food I have that's store related are crams. So I'm assuming that's light crams. Yeah. Let's say I now, have the ones that drop out of Hobbit presents and then I have the ones yeah. from like getting the... Um, codes, because I think occasionally they have a code that pops up for it. But yeah, I think they're the same thing. They probably are, and I just and haven't investigated it. Yeah. One of the other things I should note is the what makes regeneration food, why they call it regeneration food, is this is opposed to things like coffee, which boosts your speed. You have buff food, which are foods that increased one or more of your of your abilities and you have the fortification food, the soups, which allow you to um, yeah, boost up your resistances, yes. That's the word in there. So you have different types of food. So the regeneration food is the one that makes you recover faster in your in combat health regeneration and your or morale regeneration and your out of combat morale regeneration. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole other set of food stuff if you have a lore master because you can feed your pets too. 
Oh, yes, and pet food. So that's another category of food. So there are a large number of different types of food. So when they say regeneration food, they're talking about specifically the one that helps to recover morale and power faster. Okay? Gotcha. Answer your question? Yes, very much. Then uh, let's head into our week in Lotro. And Erin, just what have you been up to? Well, um, I patched the game, and that was about- <laughs> yay! Uh, yay! <laughs> That's something, at least. Uh, no, it's just it's been it's been one of those. I was going to say one of those weeks. It's been one of those couple weeks um, due to some stuff in real life, but I missed the game and I'm hoping to jump back into it real soon. So hopefully I'll have an update for you guys next time of me actually doing something. Um, uh, Senders, what have you been doing? up? So I've actually had some extra time available to me this week to do stuff both with and without Sans. Um, so Sanswinda and I already had two characters together, Cinderina and Calandrian. And occasionally play them together um and we decided that we wanted to take them through the veils of anduin together and so we then we realized that our morale needed some help um so then we went to do some deeding so we've done some really random deeding like going from like the lone lands to suddenly popping into inadway to suddenly going back to Bree. so i mean we've kind of been all over the place um yeah you know, so we did some deeding, and while we were in the Lone Lands, we discovered several instances in Garth Agarwin, or whatever that place is, in the northeastern part of the Lone Lands, um, that I did not know existed. Um, and so we did that, and we completed the challenge on all but one of them. We were so proud, just two of us, completing the challenge. Uh, the what one level that... were you? Shh, 120. Um... <laughs> <laughs> The one that we did not complete the challenge on, my auto attack killed uh, the person we were supposed to not kill. So, um, and, uh, we had some fun, and I said, I've, I've got to tell Pileaf. And then he'll go, at what level were you? Because they're not scaly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'd be like, Ugh. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, we had some fun with just the two of us running around killing stuff. And Sam says, it's a lot of fun to run around behind my lore master with a rune keeper because um, – now she knows what it feels like to run behind Hunter, uh, who can one-shot everything in front of you. She goes, it's actually a lot of fun. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. Uh, you know, so then I dusted Emerlina off. You got to get all that snow off her clothes. Um, did some sorting of her bags and then sent her off gallivanting through Middle Earth. Uh, Mordor is painfully slow. Um, she's not high enough level to not have everything attack her yet. Um, and... It takes forever to kill stuff because Guardian DPS. Right. Um, and then San Swinda and Cinderina, the characters, um, went roaming threat hunting with Pineleaf. It was Pineleaf we went with, right? Pineleaf? Right, yeah. With Pineleaf, the character, in Engmar. And Pineleaf and San Swinda completed a couple deeds. Um, and then Cinderina had to go fix her bag space afterwards um, because I have a style of play that drives my sister bonkers. Um, and so I like to run around and just kill everything because I don't want to come back and have to do all of my deeds later. And when you can just, you're running around anyways, you might as well just finish your deeds while you're out there as long as you're not pestering anybody else. So, uh, I helped them finish their deeds. Pineleaf, how was your week? And I'll begin with on Honor, where my warden completed a grand tour of Dunland and finally arrived at Theodred's camp. Yay! Yeah, so that means that I that means I finished doing all the stuff I needed in order to help our friend Lou Brennan, and I'm sure he's going to be ecstatic about all that we've done and won't do and won't have any bad responses, right? Not at all. Never bad responses. Not at all. Yeah. Everybody not, loves pine leaf. Everyone loves pine leaf, right? Except and then, right, and as for on 
my stout axe, my stout axe and made it to the Prancing Pony and wondered if all hobbits are named Underhill. <laughs> and, and because, look, where's the first thing I get sent to after helping Strider with something? I get, I get sent to talk to a constable Underhill, right? Right. Then I find my, since I'm a minstrel, I'm sent on a quest in order to talk about, to talk to a... Oh, you rolled a mini? Yeah, I have a mini. Nice! And the and my minstrel there was, of course, needed to go out and talk to Leland Underhill for the class quest. Fine. And then, to top it all off, Strider says that he's unable to go with me in order to have the Langland because he, because they're just arrived at the person he is desperately looking for, a Mr. Underhill. Hmm. What? Is everyone called Underhill? Because they all live under hills. Yeah, I guess so. Well, yeah. It must be like the Smiths or the Joneses, you know, for hobbits. <laughs> Keeping up with the Underhills. Well, <laughs> that would explain why Gandalf chose that name for Frodo to use, of course. It because, was. Because if it were a very common name, then that would be, even though the Underhills and Bree did assume that Frodo must have been related to them if... If he was also called Underhill, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then during the field trip with Sanswinda, we were surprised when Sanswinda suggested that we go out and deal with some spiders. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> That's right. I heard about Please this. Please explain. All right, we were in the Blackroot Vale in Gondor. Mm-hmm. And Sanswinda, of course, wants to be able to get her rep up as much as possible so that when we got to Dol Amroth, we'll be able to get the various goodies that you get for helping with your allies. Yes. Therefore, if she wanted to get it, she had we had to do as many quests as possible. Mm-hmm. And that meant going to the area and dealing with the spiders there. Since a lot of them are blocked, there's a sec there's a hub there that is of course blocked by having to do that because if you don't t- deal with the spiders, then you're not going to go any further. Yeah. She said you guys didn't believe she was enthused. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's not usually enthused about killing spiders. No. No, she's not. Unless it's real life. Then she's very enthused <laughs> about killing spiders. She's yeah. all about killing spiders. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, she has. Most people have a fly swatter. She has a spider swatter. <laughs> no, she does not have a dedicated spider swatter. Okay. Yeah. Anything within range will do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anything with range will do. Okay. She has been known to use books when necessary, uh, though rarely. Well, okay, okay. Sometimes she just hollers for me. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine because books aren't exactly the first thing that a librarian will think of as squishing a bug with. No, but when it's the closest thing in hand, that is what you do. You decide which one you 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 prefer more. (laughs) You do what you gotta do. An unmarred book or a living spider. I I would just hope that she doesn't use one of the library's books when she does that. Um, I do not believe she has used any library books for that, although she has used ones from our personal library. All right. And that's it for my week in Lutro. We currently have 16 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious raid of players and help support Lutro players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast your choice, or you'll be guest with us for an episode of Lutro Players News. 
We did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send one, you can send it to podcast at loadtoplayers.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Low to Players at Low to Players, Arendis at Arendis, Piney at Piney Needles, Sends Winda at Sends Winda, Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin, and Cinders at Emeralina. The Players Alliance has two shows. On Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News. And on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Low to Players News. You can choose our shows at LoadToPlayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Piney Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.